From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Inside Politics. Hello, everyone. I'm News Channel 5's political analyst, Pat Nolan. Welcome to Inside Politics. It remains perhaps the most vexing and controversial question surrounding the nation's nearly year-long coronavirus pandemic. How do we safely reopen our schools to in-person instruction and keep it that way? Nashville is among many communities struggling with this. The director of Metro Schools here in Nashville, Dr. Adrian Battle, has released the latest plan for the system to, to reopen and get back into the classroom. It began, in fact, late this week although it comes without more controversy between the, the, the school system with state education officials, state uh, the governor, and with also state lawmakers. Dr. Battle is our guest on Inside Politics this week. Dr. Battle, welcome back to the program and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here and um, connect with you today. Uh, the um, in-person classes, once again, will be, will be in phases. I think beginning on Thursday, you brought some special needs students back. Uh, it'll be followed next Tuesday by a lot of students coming back, with those with exceptional needs, along with those in the, in the classes from kindergarten through the fourth grade. Now, those groups, those groups were back in class uh, back in the fall, but so why start again with the lower grades? Yeah, great question. I think the same reasons that we started with that prioritized phase in back in the fall. Uh, we know that we have students who have exceptional needs um, and our youngest learners who thrive best in the in-person learning environment. Um, coupled with um, what all the research is telling us about um, our youngest learners and their learning needs in the in-person environment and um, the, 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 the lower risk of our youngest students in particular um, transmitting um, the virus, um, and um, uh, putting their, their classmates and their, their teachers and staff at risk. Um, so it's important for us to prioritize their needs first to get them back into the in-person learning space. Your phase in is going to take about a month. It appears in some other counties, as I've observed them, they're going back in, a, in, in all of them pretty much together in a day or two. Why is Nashville different? Well, I don't think we're much different in our prioritization of who and when um, and phasing in. Uh, most, uh, most other school districts, particularly larger ones, who are prioritizing the in-person learning option like MPS, are phasing students back in um, because it's important for us to have a really good balance of safety and speed. Uh, we want to make sure that as we're phasing our students back in that we have sustainability um, and continuity in their learning environment once they're back in to the in-person environment. Grades five and nine go back on Tuesday, February 18th. So why are those two groups of classes being grouped together? I don't remember that happening in the first plan that you had. Yes, so they'll be returning the Thursday after our pre-K through four students. Um, that was with intention. So after lots of conversations with various stakeholders, our principals, our teachers, students, and parents, um, we wanted to give proper transition time for our fifth and ninth grade students because those are the transition grades into middle school and high school. And the likelihood is that those particular students in those grades have never been into those school buildings. And so we want to make sure that we give them the proper time to to transition into their schools to learn the protocols, the safety precautions that will be in place. Now it'll be Thursday, February, it'll be in Thursday in February before grades six, seven, eight return, then almost another week going into March 3rd before the rest of the high school grades go back, particularly in those upper grades in, in both junior high and high school. Those children haven't been in the classroom in over a year. Uh, that's a lot of learning loss potential. So uh, why did you decide? I mean, somebody had to be last, but why did it turn out to be them? Well, and I first want to be clear that um, our team has been hard at work with our students learning in the virtual space. And you're right, our high school students um, in particular have been learning all virtually um, since last March. Um, but a lot of learning and growing has been taking place um, for our students. And quite frankly, many students are thriving um, in that area. Um, it was important for us as we prioritize the learning needs of our students that we started with our earlier learners and our exceptional education students because their needs are greatest in um, the virtual versus in-person learning environment. And as you mentioned, we um, then needed to phase out uh, which grade levels came um, next. We also know, based upon uh, research, that our older students are um, more likely um, to transmit um, the virus and they're the larger schools that we have in our district. And so the safety protocols that need to be in place have to be carefully thought out, um, taught, and implemented to make sure that they have a safe 
learning environment that they can continue to learn in given the in-person learning option. Well, all the students and teachers that are coming back have to wear masks and, and do social distancing. And we've talked a lot about how long it takes to get everybody back in, but are you getting any pushback from parents and others who think you're going too fast? You know, I'm getting um, feedback on both ends. I mean, some think maybe we're going too fast. Others have an opinion that we might be moving too slow. Um, I'm of the opinion that we have to have a balance between the two. Speed and safety are critical for us as we continue to navigate um, this pandemic. And as we've been watching our um, implementing and watching our tracker, uh, we've been very measured in our approach, looking at our metrics to determine when it will be safer for us to face students back into our in-person learning environment but all of those safety protocols will still be in place, including um, a requirement to wear masks, um, to social distance, uh, hand washing. Uh, we're, we're leveraging all of those mitigation strategies as students face back in. When you started this process back in the fall, uh, you returned partially from some of the grades, but uh, then the virus went back up again. You went back to almost completely virtual instruction around Thanksgiving, and you haven't come back until this week from being virtual even after Christmas. While the virus numbers have come down recently here and across the country. There are a lot of variants of this virus out there now, and there's some concern that things might spare up again. Are you optimistic you're going to be able to go in and stay in this time for in-person training, in-person instruction? I'm very optimistic. Um, so, you know, as you mentioned, back in the fall, we did start our phase in process for our exception education students and our younger um, grade students, our pre K through four students. We did have to pause our phase in back in the fall because we were um, experiencing a spike in our metrics here um, in Nashville. And we all know that community spread does have an impact on our ability to operate our schools. Uh, once that announcement was made, we did release our COVID tracker um, to help keep everyone informed and we continued um, to strengthen our mitigation um, strategies and our partnerships with um, local health officials and experts to help us um, be most informed and to be prepared to execute strong protocols at the point in time our local uh, metrics allow for us to phase back in. And so I'm very optimistic that through our partnerships we have in place um, that we will be able to sustain and prioritize the in-person option for the families who chose it. Dr. Adrian Battle, the director of Metro Public Schools, is our guest on Inside Politics. Back to continue our conversation about the return to schools for in-person in in instruction after this break.